Hello, my name's Chris Ware, and welcome to Said. Said. This is going to be a video about Said, the basics of how to use Said, which is the stream editor. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of history. I think it's interesting to put these things in their context and describe the environment which gave rise to their design so you can better understand why they work the way they work because sometimes these commands can seem a little bit weird not going to make you any better at using it but it, i think it helps to put it in its put it in its place uh, and understand it a little bit better so there's going to be a bit of history i'll put a little skippy thing in the thing so if you don't want that you can just skip past that uh so we're in the early 1970s and we're in the the world of mainframes so let's get rid of this and let's do a scientific diagram of what we're talking about Okay, so we've got a big mainframe computer with lights on it and other things that nobody understands anymore. It's a happy, happy little mainframe. Uh, these things are huge. So this is, uh, that's Godzilla, the scale. So these things are massive. These are housed in their own, sometimes their own buildings, but often, you know, a big, a big room that is dedicated to housing this mainframe computer and everybody who's connected to it, everybody who's using it is connected remotely. We're not talking internet remotely yet, but they are, you know, in other buildings and other parts of the same building, that kind of thing. And they are connected to it via uh, teletypes. So this is a teletype. This is exactly what they look like. So this is essentially an electronic typewriter. Uh, so you input text on a typewriter keyboard and then text prints out here not on a screen, on paper, on a roll of paper that's coming out of this thing. Later on, we'll get the terminals, which is a little monitor with a keyboard. Still remote, you're still sending, sending commands to this computer. This computer is running them and sending the results back, but it's actually got a screen. Uh, so these come later. And she is really happy to be using one because they don't exist yet. We're not talking about this. We're talking about the world of teletypes connected to mainframe computers and you know these are a step up from punch cards uh but but we're not talking about screens yet so there's that let's close that beautiful diagram down let's pretend my drawing wasn't amazing and have a look at a proper teletype so this is what we're talking about it is as i said it's an electronic typewriter connected to a mainframe you type commands on this keyboard, uh, those commands are sent to the mainframe and the mainframe sends the results back and they're printed out here. We're talking really limited resources. We've got limited paper and limited ink to begin with. We've got a very slow connection to the mainframe. We're talking like character at a time. Um, the mainframe doesn't have, you know, it's not the fastest thing. It was fastest thing in the world at the time, but it's not fast by modern standards. So very limited resources, which we're potentially sharing with a lot of other people. So what you don't want to do is send too much information back and forth you want this thing to be as terse as possible short commands with you know a couple of lines of results back what we certainly can't do is uh, a line editor or rather um, a screen based editor like vim so we've got a file like this and we're trying to you know say we're trying to use vim on this thing so every time i move the cursor up and down this thing's going to print the entire page the entire screen out so, you know, I move the cursor, got to wait for this slow ass printer to print out that entire page. I make a single edit, you know, change a letter or whatever. Again, got to wait for this thing to print out the entire page. So we're not there yet. We can't do that until we get to the terminal, a proper, proper terminal. It's got a screen that can refresh. That's when we can start doing Vim and screen based editors. Uh, incidentally, the, to the terminal, this thing that we use today where we type in commands, it's called a terminal emulator and it's called a terminal emulator because it's pretending to be one of these so that's cool that makes sense all right uh and similarly the, the teletype that tty that's why the ttys are called the ttys but the point is we can't do we can't do screen based editing yet uh these things by the way these things were invented in the 1880s they were used for tele, 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 for sending telegraphs. So if you were in Cincinnati, you'd type a message on this thing and it would pop up in, you know, wherever you sent it, New Orleans, let's say. 
and the message will print out on the other end and it was a step up from Morse code. Uh, and then these were repurposed for connecting to mainframes uh, and, and then you got specific models that were designed for that purpose. But this is the world we're in. We want to type in short commands and get short answers back from the mainframe. Right, so if we want to edit a file, what do we do in that environment? Well, we've we've got some basic tools for creating and kind of adding text to files. Uh, let's go big. So we can create a file with touch. I press ls. We've got lol.txt that has been created. We can add text to the file. Check that with cat. So I added a line to that file. I can add, a, I can append a line uh, by doing the uh, arrow arrow. Cat it again. So we've added a line. We've added another line. We can add multiple lines with echo e. So backslash backslash n is the new line character when we're in dash e mode. So we add that, and then, oh, I didn't, didn't do that to the actual file. So we're appending that to roll.txt, and then cat again. So we've added a bunch of lines to a file. So we could create text files with the basic, you know, Unix commands. But what we can't do is in any meaningful way edit this. We can't change any of those lines. I can't think of a way to delete a line without using, like, said or something. So the kind of editing we can do is very basic so we need a text editor and that's where ed comes in ed is properly called ed but i'm lazy so i call it ed because that's much easier to say it's kind of the successor to an editor called qed and it's got a lot of similar features but ed is often described as the standard unix text editor um it's kind of joked about a lot because it's very difficult to use you know as modern people are used to you know text editors that work properly ed is fucking weird because it's line based because it's working on those teletypes so the commands are very terse it doesn't give you much information and it's just a bit weird but also kind of familiar to anybody who uses vim it's got the same modal uh, basic sort of structure where you've got an insert mode and a normal mode where you enter commands um, the commands are very similar in a lot of cases. They have the same kind of structure where you can give a number and then a verb to do certain things. So let's do some basics. So I press A to go into append mode, and now I can, I'm can i in insert mode essentially, so I can write lines. There we go. I've written a couple of lines. I press full stop to get out of insert mode and back into command mode. Now I can list one of those. I can list line one. I can list line two. Uh, I can do a range of lines to list. Uh, there's a shorthand for list the entire file, which is just the comma. So if I do, you know, one comma two, it will list line one and two, or that range rather. Uh, the comma is shorthand for the entire file. These dollar symbols just represent the end of the line. They wouldn't be in the final file. So you can see now that we can like edit files properly. If I want to insert a line, I do two I, so I'll insert a new line two. Clumsily, but there, get out of insert mode, and then let's list the entire thing again. And you can see I've, I've inserted a line too. So it's these very, very terse commands. If I do a command that doesn't mean anything, you don't get any error information back, you just get a question mark. It's just going, what the fuck are you talking about? But not telling you what you did wrong. If I try and quit, all it does is question mark, because I've not, I've not saved this. So there's a little safety thing there. <laughs> like if you try and quit before you've saved it, it'll just say, what? Okay, so now we want to edit a line. So let's edit line two. So we're going to do 2s search on line two for uh, dog and replace that with cat. And then let's print the entire thing again. If I was actually working on a teletype, I'd probably just print that one line out because I don't want to wait for three lines to print. But there we go. We've edited the line. Uh, incidentally, there's a... So if we wanted to search for every line that contains... What should we do? Just the character E and then print it. That's the format. So G for global search, then the thing we're searching for, which in my case is the letter E, and then print. And it will print all lines that contain an E, which is lines one and three. And that that uh, that that command, that syntax, whatever, 
is g and then some reg regular expression we were just using text but th that can be a regular expression and then p that's where the grep command gets its name from the grep command is copying what this command does within ed but as a general you know text stream thing which is kind of similar to what said is doing to the other stuff in ed so that's ed that's how you edited files in a line by line way on a teletype uh, and that's where Ed came from, and that's what is uh, you know the motivation for it was, and it's it's pretty cool. You can actually edit a file using this. So I'll, I'll write this file, which is W. Uh, we've already got lol text, haven't we? So let's, let's do lol lol or lol lol dot text. So we've written that file. It tells you how many characters it wrote to that file, and now it should let us quit. And now we can cat lol lol dot text. And there we go. The sun even shines on a cat's ass sometimes. So we've created and edited a file using Ed, using the standard Unix editor. And it's not actually that hard. Like, you know, that's that's usable. You could use that. Um that's where we are. So Ed, so when when teletypes uh, fell by the wayside and everybody moved to terminals, we didn't really need Ed anymore. But some of the stuff that it can do, like the search and replace stuff was really handy and that's where said comes in so what ed did to files said the stream editor does for text streams because you know one of the formulations of the unix philosophy is that uh, programs should do one thing and they should work with text streams because they're a universal interface which is really fucking cool that's why we have text streams on linux as you know that's why the commands output and input uh text from standard input and standard output and that allows us to do a lot of cool things. So, so said is kind of allows you to do the kind of things you could do in Ed, but on text streams rather than on files. Right. So let's let's clear this and then get on with things. So said does the kind of search and replacing that you can do in Ed, uh, but as as a stream thing rather than as a file thing. You can it can also operate on files, which is useful but it's a generalized implementation of the kind of search and replacing that you could do in ed, but for everything. So if we take a command that outputs text, like even the cal command, which just gives you know current month. So we do cal, ed. So same syntax as in ed, s for search, what we want to search for, what we want to replace with. So we're replacing June with ass. So there we go, it's ass 2020, and there's our month. Uh, similarly, if you want to search and replace everything rather than, because by default said we'll search for the first instance, replace it if there's a replacement. You can do other things like print. Um, search for the first instance, replace it, and then exit. If you want it to do every instance, we do G, slash G for global. So there we go, it's replaced all ones with twos, which has made this month very confusing. You know, that doesn't make any sense at all. So that's going to be. 90% of your use of said is just searching for things and replacing them. Sometimes, you know, to change the format that information is in, sometimes just to search for a word and replace it with another word. Probably 80% of that will be replacing things with the word ass. So that's the basics. Now, we can make this operate on files. So say we've got a huge Git repo, tons of code in it, and we want to change, you know, a variable name to a different variable name uniformly to make something uniform. So if you wanted to search and replace on a bunch of files, first of all, let's create a bunch of files. Let's do a for loop. Uh, for, for i in, I mean, I've already got it there, so let's use that. So for i in one to 10, so 10 times, do echo dash e, so we've got multiple lines. Uh, this file, line one is a cat, line three is not, to a file called lol and then the number that we're iterating through dot txt so that's going to create 10 text files which you can see there uh lol should be lol1 through lol10 uh, all with the same content in them so if we cat uh lol whatever two there we go so all they, they'll all contain the same thing so they all, they all contain the same text right so we want to search and replace on all of that. So let's find locally. So again, I've got the command ready almost. So we've changed, we've decided that the word cat is now spelt with two A's. So we do this command. So I'm finding in the local directory max depth one so it doesn't iterate through all my text files. I mean, you should probably usually be a bit more careful than this. You don't want to just do blanket 
uh, text files, but you know, for the sake of the demonstration. So max depth one in name star.txt. This will make sense if you watch the find video. And then we're executing said on each of those files with dash a, which means in place. So usually what said does is it takes the input, uh, does the search and replace that you give it, and then outputs. Uh, we don't want this to just output, we want it to write to the file. So dash i means in place, which means write it to the file we're giving it. So we're searching for cat, replacing with cat, uh, and we're doing that globally on each file. Uh, these are the files, and then that, that ends the command. So that's that done. So let's cat one of those files again. And there we go. Cat is now spelled correctly with two a's. So we can get a bit more general than that. So let's go back to yeah. let's go back to this command. Let's replace every instance of the letter E with I don't know, let's use an emoji. Let's use the edge, egg, edge, the egg emoji. So we're going to replace in those files every instance of the letter E with an egg. Let's cut that again. There we go. We've got eggs instead of E's. So the power of said really comes from the fact that this, this search thingy here, that can be a regular expression. Now I'm not going to go into regular expression because it's huge and complicated and it's a separate subject. You, if you want to learn regular expression so you can deal with that stuff, learn that. But I'll do, I'll do a quick example. So let's go back to that command. Rather than replacing E's with eggs, let's do... A to Z lowercase and A to Z uppercase. So that's a little regular expression that essentially means all alphabet letters and replace them with eggs. Let's run that and then cap that command. And there we go. So now in the text file, every letter is an egg. So that really in a nutshell was part I think the history was longer than the actual said tutorial because said is actually really quite simple. If you want to if you want to operate on a file, do dash I and then give the file name. If you want to uh, operate on a text stream you don't need to do the dash i you just do your search you replace and then g if it's global and it's pretty simple um and i guess that's about it right that's don't be afraid of said and you know if there's anything you don't know if you want to do more something more sophisticated man said that is where to start man pages are great read that uh yeah i'll end it there so thank you for watching i love you all i love some i love yeah some of i love some of you goodbye